This audiobook will help you understand what the universal law is. We will talk about what your life's purpose is and make a plan for how you can certainly make the things you want happen through the laws of attraction. You have the power to bring almost anything you can imagine into your life and feel it. I want to read you my book, Miracles, Step 1, Understanding the Universal Law, so you can learn more about this idea. To make miracles, the universal law happen in your life, you only need to understand the philosophy of the universal law. We know that the power that existed in the past to do miracles is still available today because that law is basically unbreakable, which means it is infinite. Nevertheless, in today's world, we are taught to only believe in things that make sense. We aren't told that the power of the universal law is limitless or that we can use it to create miracles in our own lives. We need to look at two parts of the universal law to understand miracles. First, there is a huge amount of power inside all people. Second, the power is fair and has no feelings. You can call it the universal mind, the Christ awareness, or anything else you want. This power is what lets people understand the universal life force we call God. The life force goes on forever and is a big part of all living things and all of us. As a result, we all have an infinite amount of power inside us. To make miracles happen in our lives, we need to connect with the power, learn what it looks like and how to use it correctly. It's possible to identify with the power by recognizing that it's inside you and saying, I am eternal, immortal universe and infinite and what I am is beautiful. This locks you into the past horse and gets you ready for the next step, which is to look at its traits. Universal law is fair and doesn't care what you want or how you feel about things. It doesn't care about your hopes and dreams or your likes and dislikes. Because it is pure energy, it takes on whatever thoughts, feelings, and actions you put out there and sends them back to you emotionally in the form of everyday events. Just like power can light up both a brothel and the vicar's tea party, the universal law doesn't care about the different kinds of energy you have in your life. It won't give you anything else. So, the best way to understand miracles is to look at how your views show up in your thoughts and feelings. Although you are born with a blank mind, you can think and feel anything you want. When a kid is young, they see the universal law as pure nature that is not limited by ideas. Children often do things that seem impossible because they don't know their limits. They leave in the family car or by walking across a high edge. They don't learn the limits of what people can expect until much later, when they go to school. But these limits or confines are just lies. They are made up of thought patterns, most of which come from passing down stupidity from one generation to the next. Carl Jung called this collection of belief patterns the collective unconscious. As time goes on, these beliefs become more real, and the ideas that later generations see as real become rigid and powerful. As if the billions of people who came before you have already decided what you will experience on earth, and that's all there is to it. Being so strict doesn't let people be creative or understand that we live in a time of fast change. Basic ideas are being pushed away by a wave of knowledge, and we can't just read about the great miracles that have been done. We want the same thing to happen. This isn't possible for most people because their bodies and minds are holding them back. Their parenting is so important that it shapes their whole development, and they don't grow spiritually much. Step 2. Figure out your life's purpose. The point of life is that we are not our bodies, our feelings, our thoughts, or any of the structures and limits we see around us. There are an endless number of us in the God Force, and we use our bodies to grow spiritually through a special training called everyday life. You chose to come into this form when you came down from the higher consciousness of pure light. This is where your energy that is the real you left. This life was chosen for you because it was the next step in your infinite growth and because it would help you grow spiritually so that you could become an even bigger expression of the infinite life force or living spirit. Some people might say, that's crazy. Why would I choose this family, this society, and this neighborhood? Why didn't I choose a wealthier environment, a more beautiful body, or more intelligence? The answer lies in a level beyond the physical plane. When you were born into this world, you already had a great task or goal in your mind. In the deepest parts of your being, that goal is written in stone. Who you are now, despite how you feel about yourself, is a part of that goal in its different stages of completion.
Your mind didn't start keeping track of things, thoughts, and feelings until you were born. It doesn't know about your brave goal or the universal law that affects your boundless potential. Why? First, there would be no challenge or task for your mind, feelings, and emotions if they knew what your great goal was in life. This would slow down your growth. Second, a lot of what people know about philosophy comes from religious or tribal views that don't fully capture a true picture of how energy works and how it affects everyday life. There has never been a real understanding of the universal law built into the world's collective unconscious's many belief systems. Let's say your heroic goal in life is to learn to love yourself and take full cosmic responsibility for who you are. Also, let's say you've had a lot of experiences on the earth plane where you were weak and spoiled yourself by relying on other people for support or energy instead of giving it yourself. Being aware of this ahead of time would make you more likely to choose one move over another, and your mind would control everything you did. You would think yourself into situations or thoughts you wanted to have. The way evolution works is not like that. Fighting weakness or trying to think your way out of it won't work. Letting go of fear is how you get over it. This means that you become aware of the inner habits that bring you down and don't support a love of self or belief in self. Then you decide, I don't want to be that anymore. This moves you from the careless ways of the collective unconscious into discipline and power. You may sometimes go back to the weak side, but once you choose to be strong, the universal law's power will always be with you in some way. You may find it hard at first because your mind doesn't understand these laws, your purpose on earth, or the rules that control your potential. Because it has been through it, it will probably give you rational advice, and logic kills the part of you that can make miracles happen. Step 3. Know what beliefs are and how they work. To make your own miracles happen, the next step is to look at what ideas are. You can start to understand how to use the universal law well by going over your views and thoughts. It is normal to want things that aren't possible. When you do this, you form strong views about what can and cannot be done. No more than a certain height can you jump. Don't go faster than that. Accept the way things are and nothing else. Most passenger planes move at about 600 miles per hour. So the fastest way to get from New York to Paris is to take about six hours. In our shared mind, those are the facts. I could tell you about a man who could move his body a lot of miles in a short amount of time. Your mind would search its memory banks and come up empty, making you think, impossible. Then you might look at all the science evidence and decide that this is something that can't be done. Or, what we know about science and how we think now come from the same collective mind, and the fact that a billion people have no idea how a man could move 3,000 miles in a few seconds proves that it is impossible. A lot of people are wrong, though. There is a dimension right here on the Earth plane where this is possible, but not many people know about it or know how to use it. It depends on how you see and believe it. Whether or not you can do miracles depends on how quickly and easily you can trick the common unconscious. Getting stuck in the group mind or the way people think about the world is what is holding you back. The hardest thing about your life is this bond that you took on at birth. Your spiritual goal is to rise above it. At some point you understand that you need to leave where you are now and go into the unknown in order to join a higher awareness. That's why all the stories about the way of the initiates are about being alone. Because leaving the old spirit makes you feel like you've lost something. As you take that step, your views slowly grow to include a higher level of yourself, and you realize that what other people think is part of their growth, but not the whole truth. Life is experienced through the five senses, which are called the eyes of the mind. We are taught what each sense can do. But each of them has a level that is much deeper than what most people think, and as you move toward them, those levels will open up for you. Let's look at how we feel. You can go to other places and get rid of sensuality through your thoughts. It's possible to learn to have a stronger sense of emotion very quickly. It's not as sharp as extrasensory sight, but it's deep and smooth. You can go into places where things are different. Not many people ever get to feel everything around them, including energy, your body and its different parts, your thoughts, the place you live, and the things that happen in your life. Each one shows an energy. Some of that energy can be felt with the five senses, but most of it is invisible to the human eye. 
You become aware of the delicate forces around you when you open up to the power of the universal law and train your mind through focus and discipline. You'll learn that your emotions can help you get through life. As you go into a situation, push your emotions into what's coming next. How does it really feel? What does the law of universality tell you? What parts move and what parts don't? This drill gets easy and very accurate after a while. You might not be able to see all the tiny forces around you, but you can learn to feel them. Soon, you'll notice that the universal law has a way of popping out at you out of the blue. As things happen in your life, they pick up energy. You can feel that energy weeks or even years before they happen. Science says it's not possible to know what will happen in the future, and those who think that are right. However, once you leave the world's group, you will naturally be able to see, feel, and even hear the future. To get the most out of the universal law, you should pay attention to this expression, which is pretty much everything that happens in your life. Then, connect each event to how you really feel and what you think. Know that when things go well, it's only because you put that thought into the universal law and it answered. Think of the universal law as a shipping clerk for a big mail order business. He gets your order, but he doesn't know you. He sends out size 8 if the order says so. He only does what you ask, and it doesn't matter to him if size 8 fits you or not. What you feel, think, and how you act in everyday life are your order form. You should really know what you want out of life before you decide to change the way things are now. The universal law responds in a shaky way to messages that aren't clear. Your writing needs to be clear, and you need to be open to getting what you want. If you win a lot of money, you could quit your job and spend the rest of your days lying in the sun. You sign because you dream about the money and say, wouldn't it be lovely? But is that really what you want? You could get bored very quickly. Your mind might want to lay out in the sun, but your heart might tell you, I should have stayed where I was. There was more potential there. It's not enough to just hope for things to happen to create energy for yourself through the cosmic law. You need to understand that you have the power. What you make will be for your greatest good once you take the first step toward it. It might not be exactly what you wanted, but you need to be ready for what will happen. You should spend some time thinking about the things or situations you want before you start your miracle action plan. The global law is the shipping clerk who is waiting for your clear order. The thing you're going to use to pay for it is faith. Having the idea that something has already happened or that the situation you want is already a part of your life is necessary to make something happen for sure. That can be hard because your mind fights back because it doesn't know how the law works. Your body says, I am rich but your mind says, you're not. This conflict confuses the universal law, which is about to give you what you want. Anyone who wants to become an initiate has had to deal with this clash of opposite forces since the beginning of time, the quest for the Holy Grail or the killing of the dragon. It says that no one can join the kingdom of heaven inside them until they have tamed the negative dragon that they got from the collective mind. In a sense, you will have to leave the earth plane, even though you may still be a part of the real world. There is no place between you and the stars where dimensions are. There are travels or places inside of us. There is a truth inside these trips, and there is a visible representation of them. In other words, everything you can think of is already inside you. It doesn't matter that you don't have it with you. Whatever it is that you imagine is slowly becoming real. You can start to feel rich, think rich, and have a rich attitude if you say what you have. Go into expensive stores, have coffee at the best hotel in town, and act and feel like you already have the huge fortune you know the universal law is about to give you. In this way, you make the truth of wealth real in your inner journey, and it will then show up in the real world on your outer journey. Your wish will come true, sure, if you can hold on to that feeling and power and live as if the universal law has already given your wish. You can't be half-hearted, though, or your power will be lost and nothing will happen. You made. If you have hurt other people, you have slowed down your own development by releasing your life force. You'll have to face the fact that that was not your greatest road one day. It's your karma energy. Unfortunately, you can't judge other people because the energy you sense doesn't include their heroic goal. This means you can't be sure of what they need karmically to grow at this infinite point in their evolution. No one is a mistake or a victim. 
Everyone is in charge of their own development. Each person takes the things that happen to them in life and puts them in order. In a sense, they get three broken cups back. That's how people learn. By making mistakes and learning from them. This life you're living is yours. You may have ties and loved ones, but your growth is what you make of it and how you move through it. We all learn to be responsible for our own lives, and according to the general law, you shouldn't be responsible for other people's growth. It might sound cruel, but the law is very clear and fair. That's why hardship is so helpful. It makes people search for something bigger than their everyday lives, which connects them with their true selves. When they are desperate, they start to use their infinite power. This is when they understand that anything can be changed, that pain comes from the inner self, and that they can change the inner self by looking at it. It has been said that people are the only thing that can't be cured, not illnesses. In the law of global law, that is true of all energy. Trying to fix your problems by changing how you look or how you think won't help in the long run because deep-seated problems will keep showing up in different ways. To get rid of something for good, you have to look inside yourself to find the real cause of the problem. As you learn more, you'll have more energy that you can use to make the things you want happen in your life. Step 4. The Miracle Plan Write down on paper what you want and how you want it, putting them in order of how important they are to you. Don't listen to your mind. It can only tell you so much. Aim for the moon and don't forget anything. Make changes to the list until it works for you. But be sure you know what you want. When you explain the conditions you need, use accurate and clear language. Keep in mind that the system works, so you need to be clear about what you want. What you should do is A. Every day, read the list three times, when you wake up during the day and before bed. B. Sometimes think about your miracles and know that the universal law has got your order and is about to deliver. C. Hold your peace. Talking about your miracle drains a lot of energy, so you can't tell other people about it until it happens. D. Always act and think about the miracles you want to happen as if they are already fact. E. Allow yourself to be guided by the infinite power source as it shows you how to achieve your goals. Know that the universal law has to work in the real world for you to be able to use it. Your heart's wish can come from anywhere, so don't put limits on what you can expect. Always be open and willing to change. F. Hug and smile a lot. The first miracle is about to happen. Step 5. Learn about energy. Do not waste your time trying to figure out how the universal law will bring about your miracle, because the mind cannot know that. Know this. Your thoughts should grow slowly, like nuts that turn into oak trees. Your tree will die if you dig them up to see how things are going. Avoid worrying as much as possible. Be sure that the universal law will not let you down in any way, since everything in the world is energy. Things are only solid because the molecules and atoms that make them up move at the speed of light. It is both solid and not solid at the same time in that world. Thought forms are the same way. They are real. And because they are not limited by the material plane, they are even stronger than actual truth. You can't break them down and figure out what they mean. You have to make them and let your excitement and belief carry them away. You give the global law energy and tell it to do its job. Always try to keep your thoughts clean and on track. If worry starts to come in, don't let it take over for too long. When you question something, look at it from a higher level and realize that it's just your mind worrying, not understanding, and making complaints to ignorance. As you work with the power, whatever you set in motion will happen. Each time you turn it, it will show you the next move. Know that this force inside you is so strong that it will pull you into adventures and thrills that you could never have imagined. Don't say anything, keep it clean, and don't tell anyone how you did it. The live spirit is in everything around you, but to different degrees. It shows up more in living things than in lifeless things, but everything has it. The more you connect with the universal law inside you, the more you connect with the world around you. You see everything as a sign and a source of power. The world helps you. And the more complete you are, the more layers you can draw from. Someone I care about a lot was walking down the street one day, not sure what she should do with her life. In a physical and metaphorical sense, 
she was at a crossroads. When she felt like life was flat, she looked to the universal law for direction. Someone almost ran her over as she stepped off the curb. As the car sped around the corner, a book fell out of the trunk. The book about man's search for the all-powerful God changed her life. Soon, she left town and started a whole new developmental road that, over time, has led her to great spiritual heights, countries, and relationships she never would have thought of before. That book was a special lesson from the universal law, and she was ready to learn from it because she was in tune. It should be the same for you as you work toward your miracle. Always pay attention to every sign and change around you, and the universal law will talk to you. It seems that the more you trust it, the more it wants to show itself, and strange things start to happen. As your energy rises, chances appear like corks on a lake. That's when you'll know the power is really yours. More than anything else, this tuning in will help you make your dreams come true. In order for the other part of the global law to still work miracles for you, you can't break one part of it. Watching your life unfold makes you good at reading signs. You realize that you are the only one who can change things. Everything around you has an energy. The things you wear, the things you say, the people you hang out with, the food you eat, and the places you go. All comments about the law that says you are what you are. The key to your spiritual growth is the quality of these words, or becoming more in tune with yourself and the world around you. What you are has a lot of power. Its energy changes depending on how much live spirit or God force you show. You can expect more from life if you work on it, take responsibility, and have more energy. Imagine that you want to do a special job and need to make sure that you have as much energy as possible. Let's say you have an interview for a job. That job is on your list of miracles, and the universal law has now opened a door for you. You're almost there. Think about your miracle happening over and over again, and picture yourself getting the job until 72 hours before the interview. Don't worry about it. The day of the interview, get up early, spend as much time alone as you can, avoid arguing with other people. Tell Universal Law that you're ready and willing to accept the miracle you've been asking for, and don't drink or do drugs that make you tired. Also, eat lightly. The Universal Law shows up in new and fluid ways. If you eat a lot of heavy food, your energy drops and the Universal Law inside you has trouble speaking out. Avoid bad food and eat veggies, fruit, and other natural healthy foods in small amounts. Relax for a moment before you go to your interview. Think of things as going smoothly and positively. If you already know the person you're going to meet, picture them smiling and happy, open to your energy. See the job interview going well. See the miracle happen. Step 6. Know what time it is. There is no time in the global law. Things are changing slowly but surely. A tree doesn't know what time is because it's made of endless matter. It changes when it feels the sun's heat, but not in time. It grows from a seed and slowly gets bigger until it's fully grown. The same is true for the universal law. It can work right away, but if your energy is low, it will feel like it took a while. You need to be patient and keep going until you reach your goal, because your thoughts will come true. Take a different path if it appears out of the blue while you are going toward a certain miracle. The universal law works in strange ways and what you think you're disarming might just be your way of saying something else. An important goal for a friend of mine was to become a movie director. He finished from London's film school, but he couldn't find work because of a problem with the technology. At that time, you needed a union card to work in movies in England, but you couldn't get one unless you were already working. In a way, the union shut down the business. The miracle my friend made got stuck. He ran into an old school friend who owned a restaurant one day out of the blue. He was desperate for work and happily agreed to work as a waiter. He worked hard every day and in his free time watched movies and studied to keep his dreams alive. At noon every day a well-dressed old man came into the diner. Over the months, my friend worked hard for him and became friendly with him. My friend asked the old man what he did for a living one day. The old man said that he was about to leave a job that he had had for a long time. My friend asked, What job is that? The old man said, Oh, it's really pretty boring. I'm president of the filmmakers' union. Not much ever happens. Fifteen years later, I was watching a movie on a plane across the United States when I saw my friend's name on the credits of a big movie. 
His miracle had worked out. It's impossible to know what will happen when your energy is aligned. Keep an eye out for clues and let your emotions guide your choice. If you're still not sure after that, don't do anything. You will know right away if a direction is the right one. You can be sure that course is not right for you if, on the other hand, making up your mind takes you to go through a lot of trouble. It is generally a good idea to remember that if you have to think about a choice, it is probably a bad one. You will know when the general law comes true. Put a few simple asks at the beginning of your miracle lists. Then, as you feel the universal law give, you will feel the power of success around you, which is a good reinforcement in and of itself. Every time you mess up your list, think about how well your last miracles worked for a moment. Visualizing your success will help you believe in your power. After that, as you do miracle after miracle, you'll feel ready to move on to other things. Getting to know your own power. Step 7. Know how much power you have. Finally, we'll talk about how to create a powerful energy around you. There are bad thoughts in your mind that will make you think that your miracles will not happen. Because of this, you have to keep working on your mind's question if you want to be completely successful. Don't let an energy that goes against your goals get to you. Remind yourself that you are not your mind. In this way, you make happy affirmations a regular part of your life. In your own words, write down nine statements that show you believe in yourself and want to be happy in this life. There are three vows for dawn, three for day, and three for night. Take it easy before you look over your miracle list. Get your thoughts in order, and then slowly read your mantras. Do your best with your words. Also, make sure you know how powerful they are and what they mean to you. The most powerful force comes from the things you believe in. You can build on these examples. I am a powerful, positive individual, and all events in this day are for my highest good. What I am is beautiful, and I pull to me this day only beauty and refreshment. This day is a day of balance. I am completely aware of my body and all its needs. What I am is eternal, immortal, universal, and infinite. I see only beauty and strength every moment of my life. I see only beauty in all the people who are pulled to me, and what I am strengthens and refreshes what they are. What I am is infinite. I do not judge the evolution of others. What they are right now is for their highest good. Each action I take this day is an expression of the God force. Therefore, each action I take is a part of my infinite creativity. There is no real sin, only energy. I follow the energy of my highest self at all times, and so be it. I am open at all times to communication from my inner self, and that communication leads me to my highest evolution. Thank you for the beauty of today. May the energy of this night help you rebuild and look back. That's fine. Your statements are like little sticks in a fire. As soon as you wake up, you start to feel more tired. That energy will last as long as you use your mantras. Center yourself for a moment to see how beautiful you are and how you fit into everything then go ahead. If you're getting into a fight with someone else, give yourself a few minutes to recharge. Make sure you have a lot of energy before you go out during the day. Protect your strength and balance and keep your life in the middle. Nothing bad can happen to you. You go to places that not many people know about. Make today the way you want it to be. I can see it going well. Think of everyone you meet as good and open to your energy. Visualize that the day is smooth and moving, and that you grow from every experience. Before you go out into the world, see the white light of the live spirit surrounding you. It will protect you and make you stronger. You should know that the white light gets stronger as you believe in yourself. It protects you. And every day, you should give it new life by picturing it as bright and strong and telling yourself that you are a part of the living spirit or God, and that every moment of your life is an opportunity to learn and have fun. Your place on earth as a miracle worker comes from the fact that you have endless power. That source of endless possibilities is there, ready for you to take it and gather your history. The power will always be with you after that, and you can be sure of that. That's fine. As we listen to my book Miracles, there are likely to be some ideas that you don't know about or that are at odds with some of your religious or philosophical views. I can see why they would do that. 
And, of course, I think that everyone should look for ideas, morals, and values that fit them in the knowledge they have access to. If you want to have your own personal philosophy of life, you have to figure out how to live your life and use that philosophy and morals. Because it will be yours, you will build up a force of strength inside you. You will not live your life based on theory that was given to you from someone else. You'll be making a strong and powerful theory that supports you and is made with you in mind. When you start to focus on yourself and see your life as a commitment, your energy grows, and it grows very, very quickly. You'll feel like things are going too slowly, and you might even get a little angry with yourself because you want more but aren't seeing all the results you want at once. However, you should keep in mind that your inner power is a secret force. It doesn't always show up in the things going on around you. But as that power leaves, it's like a light going out. Slowly, though, everything starts to shine brighter. At first, you won't notice much of a difference because the energy you've put into your home, job, loved ones, and the people around you has a routine. It takes time for that pattern to change. It takes time for the light to enter that pattern in your life and bring it to life. And most of the time, it takes a few months before the changes start to show. Then it will be a few years before all of those changes in your life finally stick. You have a tradition or a goal in your life to become free, to become a completely strong person who isn't tied to the world or affected by it mentally. You have a history that helped you reach that peak. An important reason why most people never make it is that they don't want to change their old ways of living. It's almost like they are locked up. The gate is open all the time. Even though there aren't any guards, they're so comfortable with the prisoners and the routine of life in this jail that they can't leave. In this world we need awakened beings, people with a higher awareness, and people who can spread a new thought or light more than anything else. You heard me talk about the Golden Age in the book. People have thought of that as a universal sign since the beginning of time. It's the belief that one day man will rise above his flaws, and we will reach a world of perfect peace and power, where everyone is cared for and there is no prejudice, evil, or limits. But as a metaphysician and a person who is growing, you need to know that a thousand years is a very short time in the history of our world. It's not at all time. If you look at, say, the world's peace movements, hunger movements, movements for social justice, movements for full employment, or any other movement, you'll see that everyone wants it to happen right away. If you feel the same bad longing for whatever cause you care deeply about, you're basically telling the world that it's not okay for you to live a high, powerful life where everything comes easily to you. The world is lovely, you must see it. All kinds of growth opportunities can be found in the chaos. In times of trouble, like famine and war, people are trying to figure out who they are by working through their flaws. You can let this process take its time once you understand that and take a step back. What would happen if God wanted to change everything? Do you believe it would be a trouble? What do you think about the idea of putting quiet energy into people's minds so that everyone was peaceful? Or to make people more willing to share so that everyone on the planet has enough? I'm sure the God Force could do that if it wanted to, but it can't bother us just like we shouldn't bother other people. For everyone to come up and understand those ideas eventually, it has to be possible. People will come to you as you get stronger and more powerful. People in your family will ask you, Hey, why are you living a little differently these days? Or, why have you changed? Or, why do you look better dressed, smarter and more groomed and like you have more money, travel and freedom? They are going to come to you. You can teach them when they come to you. You can move people. You can show them that life is full of good things and strength. But when some people get a little power, they want to change the whole world. You're telling people that the world isn't okay when you say you want to change it. You have to see it as beautiful. You have to believe that it is perfectly perfect even if our limited minds sometimes make it seem like it's not okay while we're in this energy pattern fighting through the problems. Wait a minute. I'm in pain. It makes me feel bad. This makes me angry. Where are all the jobs? Where is the cash? Where is peace in the world? By any measure, if you were to leave the world, climb about two or three hundred miles, and then look back at it, you would notice that things are slowly getting better. Look back to the 1960s to see how different things were. For example, the energy in the 1980s and early 1990s is very different from what it was back then. 
and the 1960s were stronger than the 1940s. Also, the 1940s were very different from the early 2000s. So you can see that man is evolving very, very quickly, almost like a train going through the night. It will take some time, though, and as you gain this power, your main job is to show it to other people through this kind of selfless love. You're not telling people what to think, you're just waiting for them to ask you. If someone asks you for information or help, you should give it to them in the most open and equal way possible. Don't go out and try to fix other people, though. Go out into the world and say, I'm going to fix this because it's terrible. There's no need for you to fix it. Things are the way they are. It's coming up all the time. Not people who read the book Miracles will notice that it contains a few ideas that aren't typical or that don't fit with the most common religious or philosophical ideas. I also wanted to take a moment to draw some conclusions from the book and those ideas, build on them, and make you more aware of them for your thought. Afterward, you can add those ideas to your life if they make you feel good and support you, or you can choose not to have them as extra ideas. The first thing you probably noticed about miracles is how simple it is. The steps are easy to follow. People tend to think that things should be hard, that they should involve some level of battle. For example, they think that getting money should be hard, that falling in love should require us to lose some aspect of ourselves, or something similar. In fact, it's very simple when you look at nature, life, and moving energy. Think about how clear and simple a lightning bolt is. It's not hard to do. It's just a rush of light. In the same way, be careful not to make things more difficult as you start to make miracles happen in your life. Isn't it true that sometimes we start a job and make it so hard that all we had to do was walk across the street? Things just show up when you take a deep breath and let that freshness, simplicity, and humility come into your life. When the Bible says, the meek shall inherit the earth, it doesn't mean weak or wimpy. It means people you can punch. A sense of simplicity, naturalness, and being in tune with nature, along with the knowledge that everything is okay and will work out for the best. The simplicity starts to grow as you move away from your brain and toward this huge, endless sense of love inside you. Everything has its own natural beauty. And the next idea I wanted to talk about was the idea of God as energy instead of a person. All of the spiritual and philosophical beliefs have always been based on the idea of God as energy. It was a realization that God is light and light is love. Expanding, going beyond, and looking outward are all words that describe it. It cares for and nurtures. If you think back to the time of the tribes, you can picture people from those groups having very little schooling, very low IQs, and very short lifespans, living in harsh conditions in the desert in North Africa or in Central Australia. They didn't understand how complicated energy patterns worked. Psychology didn't start until the 1900s. We use words like ego and persona all the time, but the ideas behind them, like dream interpretation and psychoanalysis, are very new. Tribal people did not look into their minds to find out about the many layers of the psyche and inner mind in the past. So you had a native setup where there was no power and no modern gadgets. It was just them, their animals, their loved ones, and other people from their tribe living on the land. So there were rulers, shoguns, tribal leaders, tribe princes, dukes, who owned different parts of the land, and so on. That's why it made sense for them to give a personality a higher power or a god. As I learned about history and how different countries' beliefs changed over time, one thing that really interested me was the fact that most gods are men. Almost all of the time they are men. And they are male because the kings, priests, and leaders of those groups were also male. There wasn't an idea of a strong female goddess. Goddess spirit has always been there, but in most faiths and theories, God is always a man. That's because the people who led the tribes, fought wars, and ran the tribes were seen as the most powerful people in that group. They were also very strong because they lived in a very earthy time. To stay alive, they had to be fighters. To make a living, they had to work the land without any tools, power, or other tools. So being strong was very important. You died if you were not strong. In the Bible, people only lived 20 to 30 years on average. For example, a man who was 30 years old was old. I mean, really old and smart. So, if you look at the clan system that we come from and that shapes a lot of how we feel, you can see that we have kept the idea of a male god from those early days. 
For those who follow a faith or philosophy that has a male god figure at the center of the philosophy, or as a holy being in the philosophy, they need to bring that masculine figure into themselves in order to achieve power. Almost impossible to do. It's very hard to see God outside of yourself because it means you don't control your life. Someone or something above or beyond you does. Of course, this is true for most people. But as you get stronger, if you can recognize the male God figure inside you and know that that energy is being released, you can still follow the theory without letting it affect the quality of your religious belief. Instead, the strength of that idea grows because you not only become more in touch with what that image is, but you also take on its energy and live it. And I believe that is very important. In those old days, it was really hard for people in the tribe to understand that God was light because they weren't energy. We understand it now. The things inside a light switch are clear to us. A laser disc is something that people talk about. We might not know exactly what it is, but we have a general idea. Because we know what a laser beam of light might be, we are much smarter than they are. You'd be amazed at how thick some of the people from the Bible were if you met them, you know? Because you have all the energy of 2,000 years that have passed since then, and the intelligence of a society that's going so much faster than it did in the past, you wouldn't hang out with them for five minutes. So, if you want to reach the same level of complexity, I want you to think about internalizing your God figure or spiritual force, whatever that is. This means that you should know that that figure is inside you not outside of you. Being happy with that is a good way to move from an older, more standard philosophy to a philosophy of self-empowerment. That is, of course, what I'm most interested in. I'm not interested in changing your belief or what you believe in. I only want you to get stronger. The next idea I think is important is that early on in the book, Very Emotional God, I talked about the God force or God being neutral. This is a very different idea for most people because they have always thought that God had feelings. If you read the Bible, for example, you can find stories about how God was mad at some people and happy with others. God also told people these things, and there was a lot of feeling. People who live in the Middle East and the Holy Lands are very emotional and tend to exaggerate when they talk about things. In an Arab country, when two people get into a fight, it might only be over a parking spot outside the local movie theater but they talk about it in very gross ways. What I mean is that they threaten to hurt and kill each other over a single parking spot. They do the same thing when they're in love. It's just a way for them to talk about the moon, the stars, the light in someone's eyes, and how beautiful they are. When you look at that, you can see how the idea of a feeling God has made its way into current times. In fact, that's not right. All things are filled with a life force also known as the God Force. This force wants you to grow and love yourself because you are it and it is you. But it doesn't have a lot to do with whether you're happy or not, or whether you ate cornflakes for breakfast or not. So, when you end that mental connection, you get some of your power back. Between 10 and 12 years ago, I began to study altered states of awareness. I've had dream states, out-of-body experiences, ESP, psychokinesis, and a thousand other scary things happened to me during that time. One of the things I learned was that I could get lost in my thinking and have very, very low brainwave activity while still being awake. If you're an average person or someone who hasn't trained in brainwave techniques or altered states of consciousness, your brainwaves will naturally drop as you fall asleep. And a big part of my training was learning how to stay awake when your brain wants to sleep. I started to see symbols when I became interested in that and I trained to understand how symbols show up in those deep places. And one day, I saw this tube while I was meditating or in a dream. This is the same tube that people who have had near-death experiences have talked about. It seems to lead to other places. For those who have read those near-death books, the main plot is that someone has a terrible accident, gets taken to the hospital, and then dies. During the death process, they leave their bodies and generally go up this tube or this tunnel, at the end of the other tunnel is some kind of heavenly kingdom. A lot of the time they meet a spiritual being, Jesus, or whatever their symbol is. Then they get twanged back into their body while their body heals on the surgery table. Usually the ghost says, not yet. And then all of a sudden they're in, and the doctors are giving the heart adrenaline. Well, one thing was that I saw this tube when I was in these changed states of awareness. 
Over the course of years, I finally learned how to move up through this tube and send my consciousness to the other end of the tube, where it met the higher worlds. One of the first things I learned there was what this God force or light was made of. So when I talk about the God force, I'm sharing my own experience, even if it's a bit biased. I've had this experience, and the light is more kind, caring, and vast than words can say. But the first thing I noticed was that the light or energy didn't know much about me. Being fully accepting of another person is what unconditional love is, and that's how the God force feels about you. It wouldn't be total acceptance if the God force had a personal stake in your life. That's one of the things I learned from these studies, and I've talked to other people who have had the same experience. They all agree with what I said about how neutrality and saying sorry don't mean you don't care. Not that the life force or the God force doesn't care about you. It does. It loves you so much that it will give you time and patience to become what you want to be. You can see in the book that I wrote about how the world is energy, your body is energy, and you are energy. If you can start to identify with your infinite self instead of your body, or the things around you that are made of matter, you will quickly connect with or return to being infinite. I believe that is important because to make a miracle happen, you need to know that it will have to go through energy to reach you. If you think the world is very solid, true, and intelligent, then there is no reasonable way for you to get healed fast or get a lot of money tomorrow without doing anything. But if you think of it as energy and know about the laws of attraction, you're basically using a non-solid reality to pull the results you want to you. If you think your body is solid, I think the things going on around you are solid. It makes it a little harder for you to believe it will happen. That's why I thought it was important to start giving you this idea of awareness. The power of your thoughts can make things happen. You can pretty much make things happen right away if your life force and strength are strong. It will take time if it's not very strong. But you're picturing something coming at you in a wave of energy instead of through a more complicated and disjointed process of thought where there isn't always a clear way to explain how things work. As you start to become this miracle worker, I think that some of your energy should come from the idea of separating yourself from the social, racial, and group energy that we all come from. We were all born somewhere and each of us is from a different group. There are now 50 million people in the tribe, but it's still a tribe. It is a way of thinking and a social and economic unit Moving away from that a little gives you the freedom to move and spin more quickly. If you get really caught up in the old ways of your group, you start to identify with them instead of looking like yourself. In this case, let's say you're Irish. There are many ways to love Ireland. You can read the works of Irish writers and remember the good times you had in Limerick, Tipperary, or wherever you belong. In spite of being Irish, you have to bring that back to yourself and say, I am a person. In some ways, the fact that I was born in Ireland has shaped who I am today. But first and foremost, I am an individual. Second, I am an Irishman. And as you take one step away from the group energy, you start to regain your power. You start to get back the power that will make miracles happen for you. Initiates who were great beings and able to go beyond the limits of the earth plane have been around since the beginning of time and the history of man's fight within himself. They did this by controlling their thoughts. There is a part of you that will hold on to the negative, the broken, the ego, and the belief in limits. There is also a part of you that is joyful, open, loving, and ready to go. These two parts will always be at odds with each other. At first, the negative or personality part of you may be much, much stronger than the infinitely positive and expanded part of you. The goal is to start flooding the negativity with positivity. It's possible that you've heard me talk about being careful with your words and how you show yourself before. Kind, food, water, and everything else they need to stay alive. That's why I want you to focus on that. I want you to focus on being open to receiving. It's better to give when you're happy with getting. This is because you become a bigger, wider, more expansive person. So often there are people whose main goal in life is to help others. They give little things but always with conditions, limits, and things to think about. Think about the time when you can give without expecting anything in return. You're giving off this shine from your heart. And you can only get that if you have learned how to receive. So, I want you to keep an eye on things next week and the week after that. Pay attention to how well you receive. Are you a master at getting things? 
Did you finish school at the University of Receiving? By the way, that's the key to becoming broad, which I find interesting. In the book, I may have told you that you are by yourself. That is true. The divine part of you comes to the real world to help you grow. You get stronger if you focus on that power inside you that lets you do miracles and gives you endless energy. It is taught in all major faiths and beliefs that we should not focus on ourselves. First, we should focus on our God who is outside of ourselves. Then, we should think about the people in society whom we should help in some way. As part of the concept I teach, you should look in the mirror and know that if you get stronger, you have something to offer the world. At the work I give in the Pacific and around the world, I meet a lot of people who want to help others and give. But they don't really have any power to give. They'd like to help the world get out of poverty, but they don't have any money. They want to make the world better, but they are sinking. Which means you know you're by yourself when you look at that. All of the things that make you who you are, having a wife or husband, kids, friends, work partners, and other people you belong to, are meant to show you back to yourself. That's what it's for. That's what relationships are for, after all. You can learn about yourself from them. Also, you are a person who is changing as you move through the physical plane. Individuality is very important. It needs to be important, too. I don't mean it in an egotistical way. You know you're by yourself, though. You are your own person when you come in and when you leave. You may remember that I said in the book that the universe law can't tell you what you want. People find that hard to understand because they think of God as knowing everything. And here's how I'd like you to think about it. The God force or the life force is in everything, which is true. But it doesn't focus on each part minute by minute. The situation would be the same if you owned or ran a big global company. At 9 a.m., you might know that you have a branch in Nigeria. Tuesday, whether the secretary is sick or not, the telex isn't working because the power blew a switch or something else. The things that happen in your job in Nigeria every day and every hour don't affect you deeply personally. Everything that comes into your head office is what you're interested in, and that's how you're in charge of things or letting this company grow. The life force is in everything, doesn't have an opinion, and is fair. It has nothing to do with making a choice or knowing what you want. In other words, God doesn't say, being rich is good, being poor is bad. It's not like God says, we want you to be healthy, it's bad to be sick. It doesn't say anything. That thought frees you up. Because when it doesn't have an opinion, it can give you an image that is completely free of any opinions. When you look in the mirror, you don't want to see someone else's view. That way, when you're planning to go to the beach, the image might tell you to go to the show instead. Once you know that, you need to be very clear about what you want and what you put into the global law. You can't be wishy-washy as you look at your miracle action plan. What does it mean to just say, I want more money, in an affirmation? You have more money if you walk over a 10-cent bill in the street. That's all there is to it. That idea no longer has any power. That is, you want to be clear, but also leave enough room for it to come from anywhere. In this case, you would say, I want to tenfold my abundance in the next six months. This gives you time. It is a clear idea. You're saying that it's not coming from here, there, or over there. I'm ready to get ten times as much wealth in the next six months, and I'll take it from anywhere because I already know I'm good, holy, and worthy of it. So, when you use the universal law with certain ideas, it gives you certain results. People often have thoughts, goals, and ideas that are so vague that they can't even describe them to. Another person, let alone to a light, a God force, or something that shows them exactly where they are. If you're not sure what your great life's goal or task is, you need to start to get clear. That can take months at times. That's okay, though. You have a lot of time. When you make your life less complicated and more simple, you easily say things like, hey, I want to be a violinist, or hey, I really want to go live on a farm in North Africa, or something else. To make that miracle happen, you need to find our balance. You don't have a chance if you don't have balance. This is because you're trying to use your belief in infinity or the light in everything to get what you want. And since the light comes from being pure and balanced, it can only be in sync with you if you are also balanced. And balanced refers to a physically balanced state. Even if you don't fix everything in your body, it needs to be adjusted. 
It's also important to love yourself by taking care of your body, working on it, knowing when things go wrong and taking action to fix them, studying your body, and so on. The second part of balance is mental, which we've already talked about. Next, keep your mind in check by realizing that you can't use too much reasoning when miracles are happening. If you don't, you'll lose faith in the miracle happening. And when you have physical balance, emotional balance, and mental balance, you can move through the physical plane with ease and strength. You don't rush, you don't let things get out of hand, and you don't give up your power unless you have to or choose to. You also try to make your life seem as magical as possible. Then, as you start to make this action plan and picture those miracles, remember that there is no time because we live in the present moment. And in that moment that never ends, you have to make your statement picture or goal in your thoughts. Yes, if you can feel yourself going through the things you really want, they will happen. If you think that the things you want are outside of you or that you can get them later, you will never really get them. This little light of your purpose will grow as you start to feel those feelings and nurture them. Because it is in you and you believe it, it will come true. To be fair, there is some time between picturing the feeling, the goal, or the miracle action plan, and when it comes true. You will need to be calm during that time. You keep up and the energy you've made in your life so far. This is what you should think about. If you can make a strong mental picture of yourself as a miracle worker, as a wonderful person with lots to offer the world, then that person comes to life. The way you put that energy into the mind is like shining a light in it that wakes it up. So, a lot of the time people have become so firmly rooted in materialism and logic that they can't even imagine things that aren't logically right in front of them. They can't do that unless they can touch, taste, and see them. You have a great tool inside you that will help you become a stronger person if you can start to use the idea of making your thoughts look like the way you want to see yourself. In order to accept yourself, you can use creative vision. Now that sounds like a pretty big job, doesn't it? Are you okay with the way you are? Do you accept things about yourself, like the way your face looks? So to speak, your face is the shape you gave it or the shape it was in the beginning. Also, you have to like that shape. You have to be able to stand naked in front of the bathroom mirror and honestly say, this is utter beauty. And it gets more beautiful once you can see it. It's easier to say, this is utter beauty when something is more beautiful. So, to begin, you can look at the idea of self-acceptance as a whole. You can start to heal your whole personality if you give yourself time to go beyond your limits and forgive yourself for the parts of yourself that aren't as strong or worthy. It's awful to meet someone whose personality is so badly broken up that they are full of negative thoughts, guilt trips, and a poor sense of who they are. The nice thing about you is that you have a good opinion of yourself. Additionally, when you show others a good picture of your worth, they will do the same. Isn't it true that if someone feels like a victim, life seems to throw itself at them and make them a victim? When you meet someone like that, you almost want to punch them in the face to make them happy. That's what they pull to them. When you can see a picture of yourself in the loving acceptance and pure love you have for yourself, it's easy to show that love to other people. People who are unhappy, annoyed, or angry are really saying, I'm mad at myself. When people moan, judge, or criticize, they are actually judging and criticizing themselves. Because you will. Only see beauty and happiness around you when you are calm, balanced, and happy. If you are calm, it won't bother you if someone does something you don't like. When you are out of balance and don't have a good sense of who you are and how you should be seen, you will attack others and show the world how negative you are. Also, people who you are mean to will treat you badly in return. So, the creative vision process is to picture yourself as this whole person. You're not perfect, and that's okay. You haven't reached the end of your trip yet. You can start to look at your life and put that new energy to use. The things that make you feel bad make you avoid them. If I say avoid, I don't mean to dodge them. What I mean is that you are careful not to get caught up in things you know you can't handle well. You plan your life to build on your strengths, or raise statues to your strengths, and over time, all of your weaknesses go away. I want to talk about another idea related to creative vision. 
I want you to start picturing what your life's meaning is. A boring life of working, living, having kids, doing the dishes, and so on, is not an exciting life. It doesn't serve a greater cause. When you think about that greatest goal in your thoughts, it starts to give you something to work toward. It makes you dedicated to a higher goal, the force, and the great things in life. That's the next thing you should do. Once you have a strong image that you can show the world and that can help the world, you can work on building a commitment or a greater cause. And if you don't feel like your feelings are connected to a higher purpose right now, use creative imagination to picture yourself walking into or through life with a higher purpose. Whatever that purpose is, you have a lot of options. You could be a great diplomat, a peacemaker, a creative person, or someone with an amazing ability to care for and nurture others. You could also be an organizer, and that's your gift to the world. You could be a leader, and you could lead it. You could also be a supporter, and you could join forces with a leader, knowing that the supporting role is just as important as the leading one. Being yourself is your gift to the world. If you're happy with who you are, then your gift is a happy gift. Next, you might want to think about setting goals with artistic ideas. The most important thing about making goals is not to make them too hard for yourself. If you can't picture or understand how you'll reach that goal, you'll never reach it. That's why I like setting goals that aren't too far away from where you are now. That means everything is doable and possible. You're not asking for something that is completely impossible, because you already have so much energy that some things are impossible for you. But as you move from one goal to the next and gain more knowledge and skills on the physical plane, you'll start to see other places, goals, and choices. Another thing about goals is that you need to be able to let them go. You're going to reach your goal, and if it changes, you should adapt. You don't need to be rigid. Do you not agree that when someone goes on a very rigid quest and spends 20 years in the desert looking for some kind of small beetle, you can't help but wonder why they bother? Why didn't they realize after a couple of years that spending their life looking for this beetle was a waste of time? However, when we give the mind a goal, it's almost like it sets itself to do it. I also believe you should be flexible and open to changing your goals whenever you need to. Visualization can help you see yourself through projects. If you need to turn in a job at a certain time and place or have a creative idea, you'll probably find people who can help you make it happen. You should know that everyone who joins will have their own thoughts and ideas about what the project is. They need to know what you want, how the job will be done, and how everything will fit together. You need to have a good idea of the job before you do that. You can also use artistic thought to think about things. It's kind of like a dress rehearsal where you go over the whole job and see how everything fits together. You can see any problems or things that need to be changed for the project to work when you creatively picture it. You can also start to bring light and happiness into it. At times it feels like the project is just a thought in someone's head. You have to bring other people to the project and make it real in their heads. Everyone and everything you see on the plane is just your thoughts come true. Even though a famous bridge is a real building, it all began as an idea. That thought form needed to be clear, upbeat, able to complete the task, and able to afford it. There may have been more than a thousand people who worked on building that bridge. There was, however, someone in charge of that thing who told everyone what the thought form is. Hey, this is the thought form. This much steel, this much concrete, and this much support. This is how we'll keep the bridge up. We'll pay for it this way. Also, when you do creative thinking, you can bring this light into your life that will make these projects possible. If you have to inspire other people in a business setting or office, and a group of you have to work together to make an action plan, sales team, or whatever you're doing, this is especially important. As you start to see all of those people responding well to you, you can also start to use creative visualization to see them getting the job. A lot of the time, a project fails because people don't talk to each other enough. No one can read your mind. They'll make you feel like they know what you want, who you are, and how you feel. No, they don't. You can also tell someone, please dig a hole here, and expect them to understand. But the person who is listening to the instructions doesn't always truly understand. And what you think of as, dig a hole here, might be very different from what they think they see. So they dig a one-foot-deep round hole when what you really needed was a 30-yard-wide trench that was long and thin. 
By using creative visualization and getting your feelings in order, you can get a very clear picture of what you want. Then you can tell that person, I need a hole here. It needs to be 30 yards long, 3 yards wide, and it's going to go from the lamppost to the tree. And they will know what you mean. Most of the time, you'll need to tell someone something three times before they fully grasp it. By the way, do you know how long this hole is? They ask. Yes, 30 yards. Okay, where's it going to be built? You ask. Well, it has to go from the tree to the bus stop. You say, nope, it has to go from the tree to a lamppost. They say, fine, I get it. Then you ask again, how wide is the hole? They say, well, you want it as wide as a spade. You say, nope, I don't want it as wide as a S. And you can only do that if it's a clear understanding in your thoughts. As you use this method, you'll realize that what you're really doing is getting organized and clearing yourself out as a person. Lastly, I believe that the best way to use creative vision is to make a safe place for yourself. As I already said, you are a unique person who lives alone. Self-improvement and getting in touch with who am I can only happen when you take a break from your busy life and look at yourself. And that refuge is where you pray to yourself. This prayer can be done in any way you choose. It can be a meditation while listening to music or while running on the beach. But you do need time to look at your thoughts and let all the bad things out. You can do this by making the bad things small, by making them seem unimportant, and the good, beautiful, loving things big. But I think that's one of the main points of artistic imagery. As you work on this method, the miracle-making technique, you might want to work on your ability to bring good things to you. Of course, the first thing you need to do is get past the cultural views about lack. The world is not scarce. It is too full to be useful. We have more of everything we need than we can ever use. People teach us that things are scarce, so we believe it. With the miracle action plan and creative vision, you can start to picture yourself getting richer. And that's very important for you because you'll need money to buy the events, insights, and information you need to learn. So as you start to think of yourself as wealthier, you actually become wealthier. It's really that easy. A very wealthy person is rich because he or she is at ease with money, she is comfortable with giving, and he is comfortable with getting. He sees himself in the market making a lot of things which brings that kind of wealth. In this case, your vision plan or miracle plan is like making a plot for a movie in which you live in comfort and wealth with all the things you need nearby. There is a lot of money energy in that movie. You are organized. You have a way to get the money. You know how to deal with it. You can bank it. You can add it up. You keep track of it. And you are aware enough to know how much money you have. You don't find yourself spending $5,000 and making $4,000. You find yourself in charge. It's also important to know what resources you have, how much they bring in, and how much your living costs. This is similar to how you need to train yourself to know who you are when it comes to money. If you're living a lifestyle that costs more than you earn, you have two choices. One, cut back on the things you don't need. Or two, go out into the world and make more money. The ease of that is lost on most people, but it is simple. It is simple to be in charge of money, to be strong, and to have all the money you want. But first, you need to have an idea or a feeling that you will always be taken care of and have enough money. People who set goals and wants need to know that their goals should be like a reason in life and not like a drug. If you want to become a great musician, that's a goal. Being a great musician is a goal because, first, it lets you show your talent. Second, it's something you enjoy doing. And third, it brings joy to other people. If that goal turns into an addiction or an obsession, you start to change the quality of the desire. Once happened because it's almost like you can ignore them. You can put out there what you want and do everything you need to do to make that happen once you have the drive. But part of you also needs to let go of the wish. And if you say, well, if I don't become a great musician, I'll just get pleasure from playing whatever music it is I play. I'll get pleasure from listening to other people's music. I'll get pleasure from creating this dimension of sound around me that gives me pleasure. You should be careful with that because so many desires turn into obsessions, which can make it impossible to achieve that desire. You have to believe in yourself for it all to make sense, right? Someone can't be told, hey, believe in yourself, if they don't already. To change things, 
you need to start seeing your life as proof that you believe in yourself. And as you start to see where the wins are and what works and what doesn't, you slowly but surely make it a habit to believe in yourself. You know deep down that you can do what you say you will do and deliver. Last but not least, I want to say that earth will be healed, everyone will be rich, wars will end, and there will be a golden age. Humans, on the other hand, need to know that it might take time, maybe a long time, but we can be sure that it will be there because it is something that everyone wants. When you step away from everyday life and start to feel wealthy, calm, and healthy again, you have already made the golden age inside you. Because of this, if there are 4.9 billion people on the world, the person who already lives in the golden age starts to make it happen for everyone else. This power you make will be your gift to the world. And you were made in secret. You won't wear it on your sleeve and push it on people or brag about it. People will see the power and golden age in you and say, Gosh, isn't that person marvelous? I mean, aren't they wonderful? Look at how calm and peaceful they are, how poised they are. Look at their sensuality, their beauty. Look at their standing, their knowledge, and their wisdom. And you become that energy. No one is going to fly down to earth, wave a magic wand, and make everything better. We're going to fix it one by one. You make it happen for yourself, and then you show others how beautiful it is, what a gift you are to the world, and what your life's goal is. What comes next is making miracles happen in your life. Thoughts before we start. Pick out a few things from your miracle action plan. Write down the things you want to happen in your life and think about them again. Place yourself somewhere quiet, pick out a comfy chair, and take a seat. Stand with your feet flat on the ground and your hands on your lap, palms down. Slowly breathe in and out. Hold your breath for a moment, and then let it out. Take another slow, gentle breath in. Hold it for a moment, and then let it out. Take a slow, gentle breath in, hold it for a moment, and then let it out. Sense that your body is relaxing very deeply. Just think about how easy it is to calm down. You should picture yourself going across a green field in your head. Pay attention to the cool grass under your feet, the sun's warmth, a body of water nearby, and the birds singing as they fly back and forth. I want you to feel a deep sense of calm inside as you walk through this field. I want you to know that you and nature are one and the same, that you have the same abundance inside you as nature. I also want you to pay attention to a small hill far away as you walk through this field. Get on your feet and walk up the hill. When you get to the top, find a nice place to sit down. Place your feet on the floor and sit up straight. Place your hands in your lap with the palms facing down. Just think about your left foot for a moment and let it go completely. Next, bring your attention to your right foot and let it rest. Then move your attention to your legs and relax all the muscles in them. Feel your body getting more and more at ease. Let go of all the tightness in your chest and relax your upper body. Take a slow, gentle breath in and hold it for a moment. Then let it out slowly while going deeper and deeper. Take all the stress out of your shoulders and neck. Let go of your arm muscles and feel your hands heavy in your lap. Take all the stress out of your shoulders and neck, as well as the muscles in your jaw and around your eyes. Slowly breathe in and out, hold your breath for a moment, and then let it out. Now that you're outside, I want you to know that there's a small park close. Leave where you're sitting and walk slowly and quietly toward the forest. Start to walk into the forest. Feel the life force of the forest all around you. Imagine going deeper and deeper into the forest. As you move through this forest, you notice that it's getting darker and that the plants around you are getting thicker. Your pace also slows down a bit. Know that you are safe inside even though you don't know where you're going. As you continue to walk down this road through the forest, pay attention to how the plants are getting thicker around you and how your progress is slowing down pretty much to a stop. Pay attention to the plants that are growing around your arms and legs as you look at your body. Let the plants hold you in place. Pay attention to the bushes and vines that are growing around your arms and keeping you in place. Let that happen and be. Think about the plants that are holding you down as you look at these vines and other plants. These plants are your limits and training. It's in your mind. Keep in mind how useful that limiting has been to you in the past and how it has helped you get to this point. 
Become aware of the fact that you want to let go of those restrictions. You're stuck in the forest with your food. You can pick up the stick if you move your body just a little bit. You should start to cut and loosen the plants and bushes that are holding you down as soon as you have the stick in your hand. Do it now. We're ready to wait. As you let go of the things that are holding you back, feel how free you are becoming, without all those old beliefs that are stopping you. As soon as you're free of the plants and vines that were holding you down, I want you to keep going down the road through the forest. You are at peace with everything and one with it. A ray of sunlight from high up is shining down on your way and giving you a golden glow. Also, as you walk down this road, pay attention to a big rock that is covered in grass. Find a nice spot to sit on the rock when you get there. Pay attention to the bright light that is shining on the core of you. Let out a slow, gentle breath, and as you do, let go as a sign of people. Expectations are truly endless. Picture the first thing on your miracle action plan. Look closely at what you really want in your life. As you look at it, get to know it and how it feels. Picture yourself having that thing in your life. Do it now. I want you to put that thing on like an overcoat and let it fill every cell of your body once you really know what it feels like. It should be a part of your life, and you should know that you earn it. Next, put up one more miracle list item and look at it carefully. You should feel like you are a part of it, and that the things you want are happening in your life. You should also be sure that you and what you want are identical in every way. Look at the second thing on your list for a moment. Once you're sure you know what it is and can feel that it's a part of you, put it on like a jacket and let it fill every cell of your body, taking a slow, gentle breath in and holding it for a moment, then letting it out slowly and deeply. Finally, look at the third part of your miracle action plan. Make it a normal part of your life and make sure you know how it feels. Once the spirit of that thing and you are the same, put it on like a garment and let it fill every part of your being. Pay attention to the bright light that is shining in the middle of your body and let it flow through you. As you take a slow, gentle breath, say to yourself in silence, I am eternal, somewhat universal, and infinite. My expectations are truly limitless. Then turn away from the world and keep going down the road. Go further into the bush as you walk along the road. Pay attention to a nature spirit or other natural being sitting on a tree stump in front of you. Honor the spirit of nature for a moment, and then walk up to it. Understand that the nature being is really strong and living. The nature being says you can ask it one question about a lining, and it will give you an answer. Put your question forward right now. We'll be ready for you. After the nature spirit answers your question, Go back out of the trees and turn around. As you walk down the road, pay attention to the rock and the sun shining on you. Watch out for some vines and leaves that have grown back as you walk through the area where they used to hold you. Take the stick and cut away the last bits of tape. And when you feel like nothing is stopping you from living the life you want, walk slowly and happily out of the forest, down the small hill, across the field, and then turn around to face the sun. I want it to shine on the center of your peace. Change is a natural part of my life. All things are possible for me. I am what I am, and what I am has beauty and strength. Recite this thought to yourself slowly and gently. Open your eyes and come back to the real world in your own time and place. You, there is nothing in the law that fights back. You're strong. Your mind doesn't agree with me that I'm rich. You're not the conflict that made the universal law which is about to give you what you want, confused. Anyone who wants to become an initiate has had to deal with this clash of opposite forces since the beginning of time. The quest for the Holy Grail or the killing of the dragon? It says that no one can join the kingdom of heaven inside them until they have tamed the negative dragon that they got from the collective mind. To use a figure of speech, he will have to leave this world even though you may still be a part of it. There is no place between you and the stars where dimensions are. There are travels or places inside of us. There is a truth inside these trips, and there is a visible representation of them. That means everything you can think of is already inside you. It doesn't matter that you don't have it with you. 
whatever it is that you imagine is slowly becoming real. If you say, I am rich, you have to start thinking, feeling, and acting like you are rich. Spend some time in high-end stores and have coffee at the town's best hotel. Act and feel like you already have the huge wealth that you know the universal law is going to give you. In this way, you make the truth of wealth real in your inner journey, and it will then show up in the real world on your outer journey. Your wish will come true, sure, if you can hold on to that feeling and power and live as if the universal law has already given your wish. You can't be half-hearted, though, or your power will be lost and nothing will happen. You'll need to walk like a warrior. You will reach your goal no matter what difficulties you face. It doesn't matter where you are or what problems you are facing right now. You might as well decide to collect because the universal law doesn't care if you have what you want or not. You make things happen, so when you want something, it's yours. A lot of the time, we don't think we deserve success, wealth, good health, or anything else we want. As kids, we are told that we are not good enough, that we owe something to society or the real world, or that we have a huge sin that we need to pay for before we can live life the way we want to. That's not true. If you put energy into the law, it will give you either diamonds or plain rocks, based on what you put in it. You should really think about the bad things you think about yourself. Think things like, Oh, I never win anything. I'm too old, they'll never hire me. Or, I can't be with that person, I'm not pretty enough. This way of thinking shows how the mind works and what it tells us to do. Miracles don't make sense. So the last thing you need is advice that makes sense. In this case, you should recognize the mind, thank it, and say, I do not accept any energy that goes against the unlimited power that lies within me. Then you should keep going. The endless power is so kind, so strong, and so much bigger than the mind that it lives in a different world. This is why the mind has trouble recognizing it. It will feel like a gut feeling or give you a rush of adrenaline, but that's it. It's like a breeze in your thoughts. You can't really hear, touch, or taste it. You'll know when it starts to work in your life by the kind of people and things that happen around you. Let's quickly go over some important things before we move on to step four, which is the miracle action plan. Since the life spirit or eternal law is limitless, so is what you are. The global law is fair and unbiased. It doesn't care about who you are. It will give you anything you want. You are more than your body, your feelings, or your mind. You are a part of the living spirit that is always learning. Because it is the real you, the universal law can be used at any time. If you understand the mysterious and spiritual parts of the universal law, you will be able to make anything you want happen. You earn it. Miracles are not something God gives you. They are part of you, which is God. Last but not least, the world law is naturally balanced and harmonious. That way, as you follow your action plan, you won't be able to hurt other people. You will only be able to make things for yourself. You can't force the universal law on other people by saying, I want this to happen to my friend. That would be disrespectful because you don't know what your friend's great life plan is, so you can't change it or change what he is going through right now. He needs to live his own life because he has infinite power inside him. And learning that is part of his growth process. There is no such thing as good and evil or saints and sinners in the general law. There is one power that runs through everything, and everything is a part of that power. You are the only one who can tell the difference between good and bad. Because there is no judgment in real force, there are different levels of energy. At the end of this life, you will be able to look back on what you have done and see how well you have centered your life on a practice of seeing and using the live spirit. That being said, your review won't be based on feelings. Instead, it will be about the quality or speed, if you prefer, of the energy you made. There is a life force inside you called karma energy that slows down when you hurt other people. This slows down your development, and one day you'll have to realize that it wasn't the best road for you. Unfortunately, you can't judge other people because the energy you sense doesn't include their heroic goal. This means you can't be sure of what they need karmically to grow at this infinite point in their evolution. No one is a mistake or a victim. Everyone is in charge of their own development. Each person takes the things that happen to them in life and puts them in order. In a sense, they get three broken cups back. That's how people learn, by making mistakes and trying again. This life is yours. 
You may have ties and loved ones, but your growth is what you do with your life and how you move through it. We all learn to be responsible for our own lives, and according to the general law, you shouldn't be responsible for other people's growth. It might sound cruel, but the law is very clear and fair. That's why hardship is so helpful. It makes people search for something bigger than their everyday lives, which connects them with their true selves. To get help, they start to use their infinite power, which makes them understand that anything can be changed. People who use drugs and booze which lower their energy end up suffering. For instance, if you eat a lot of heavy food, your energy drops and the universal law inside you has trouble speaking out. You should eat small amounts of salads, fruit, and other natural healthy foods. Don't eat bad food. Take it easy for a moment before you go to your interview. Think of things as going smoothly and positively. If you already know the person you're going to meet, picture them smiling and happy, open to your energy. Watch the interview go well and the miracle happen. Step 6. Know what time it is. There is no time in the global law. Things are changing slowly but surely. A tree doesn't know what time is because it's made of endless matter. It changes when it feels the sun's heat but not in time. It grows from a seed and slowly gets bigger until it's fully grown. The same is true for the universal law. It can work right away. But if you don't have enough energy, it will feel like it took a long time. You need to be patient and keep going until you reach your goal, because your thoughts will come true. Take a different path if it appears out of the blue while you're going toward a certain miracle. The universal law works in strange ways, and what you think you're doing may actually be a way for you to reach a different goal. An important goal for a friend of mine was to become a movie director. He finished from London's film school, but he couldn't find work because of a problem with the technology. At that time, you needed a union card to work in movies in England, but you couldn't get one unless you were already working. In a way, the union shut down the business. The miracle my friend made got stuck. He ran into an old school friend who owned a restaurant one day out of the blue. He was desperate for work and happily agreed to work as a waiter. He worked hard every day and in his free time watched movies and studied to keep his dreams alive. At noon every day, a well-dressed old man came into the diner. Over the months, my friend worked hard for him and became friendly with him. My friend asked the old man what he did for a living one day. The old man said that he was about to leave a job that he had had for a long time. My friend asked, what job is that? When I asked the old man what his job was like, he said, I'm president of the filmmakers union. Not much ever happens. Fifteen years later, I was flying across the United States and watching a movie when I saw my friend's name in the titles of a big movie. His miracle had worked out. It's impossible to know what will happen when your energy is aligned. Keep an eye out for clues and go with your gut. If you're still not sure, don't do anything. You will know right away if a direction is the right one. You can be sure that course is not right for you. If, on the other hand, making up your mind takes you to go through a lot of trouble. In general, it's a good idea to remember that if you have to think about a choice, it's probably not the right one. You will know when the general law comes true. Start your list of miracles with a few simple asks. Then, as you feel the universal law give, you will feel the power of success around you, which is a good reinforcement in and of itself. As you rearrange your list, take a moment to reflect on how well your most recent miracles worked. Visualizing your success will help you believe in your power. After that, as you do miracle after miracle, you'll feel ready to move on to other things. Step 7. Know how much power you have. Finally, we'll talk about how to create a powerful energy around you. There are bad thoughts in your mind that will make you think that your miracles will not happen. Because of this, you have to keep working on your mind's question if you want to be completely successful. Remember that you're not your mind and that you don't have to accept energy that works against your goals. In this way, you make happy affirmations a regular part of your life. Write down nine statements in your own words that show you believe in yourself and that this life is your chance to be happy and fulfilled. Write three affirmations for the morning, three for the day, and three for the evening. Take it easy before you look over your miracle list. Get your thoughts in order and then slowly read your mantras. 
it's important that you feel the power of your mantras and that they mean something to you. The most powerful force comes from the things you believe in. You can build on these examples. I am a powerful, positive individual, and all events in this day are for my highest good. What I am is beautiful, and I pull to me this day only beauty and refreshment. This day is a day of balance. I am completely aware of my body and all its needs. What I am is eternal, immortal, universal, and infinite. I see only beauty and strength every moment of my life. I see only beauty in all the people who are pulled to me, and what I am strengthens and refreshes what they are. What I am is infinite. I do not judge the evolution of others. What they are right now is for their highest good. Each action I take this day is an expression of the God Force. Therefore, each action I take is a part of my infinite creativity. There is no real sin, only energy. I follow the energy of my highest evolution at all times. That's fine. Small sticks in a fire are like your encouragement. As soon as you wake up, you start to feel more tired. That energy will last as long as you use your mantras. Take a moment to center yourself and see how beautiful you are and where you fit in the whole of things. Then move on. If you're getting into a fight with someone else, give yourself a few minutes to recharge. Also, make sure you have a lot of energy before you go out into the day. Protect your strength and balance and keep your life in the middle. Nothing bad can happen to you. You go to places that not many people know about. Make today the way you want it to be. Think it's going to go well and picture everyone you meet as happy and open to your energy. Visualize that the day is smooth and moving and that you grow from every experience. Lastly, before you go out for the day, picture the white light of the live spirit surrounding you. It will protect you and make you stronger. Know that the white light gets stronger as you believe in yourself. That's fine.